Hello everyone, today's episode is all about stew. So all I need you to do is sit back, relax, imagine your favorite stew. It could be Oha soup, it could be Begiri and it could be me and Tuashe. But whatever you imagine right now, this episode is going to be yummier. This is Binji with Game Changers, where we capture success from different perspectives. We delve into the minds of people with celebrated brands and careers who have turned their dreams into realities and their ideas into lucrative empires. I'm your host, Shay Banigbe, and you're welcome to the show. See you when we return. Welcome back to the show, everyone. And today, hmm, I told you about stew, stew, stew. OK, I'll tell you why. I have with me someone really special. He's the founder and CEO of Captain Foods Limited, producers of Captain Fully Cooked Ready Stews, which is distributed across over 300 stores nationwide, yes. And guess what? They retail in Ghana as well, in the US and the UK. From starting alone in his kitchen with a staff strength of zero, he now has a 30-man strong team. Mm -hmm. In 2007, Kachi was named on, the, on Forbes 30 most promising African entrepreneurs list alongside four other Nigerians. And today, I have with me on the show, Kachi Ekeje. How are you? You're welcome right. to the show. So good to have you on here. Great to be on here. Yeah, yeah. you look good. Yeah. You know what I had to you? I thought I was the one farmer looking. When you came in, I said, oh, you manufacturing still? Yeah. How are you today? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah same here. So, Kachi, you saw a need in the food space. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you felt people needed to be able to have access to pre-cooked, packaged stew. Mm -hmm. And you spent about a year researching and mm -hmm. created something. But before I ask my question, are you telling me that I can take your product, open the sachet, and pour it right into my spaghetti and eat yes, immediately? correct. No boiling, nothing. You, you can warm it up for one or two minutes to make it warm, but really, it's a ready-to-eat stew. Amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. What was the research process like? Did you, was it all, you know, internet that taught you, or how, how did you go about researching? Yeah, so create. a lot of it starts from the internet, right? You research, because I came from oil and gas, and I uh, spent about 10 years in oil and gas. So coming into the manufacturing food processing space was a new thing for me. So I had to study. So I studied for a couple of months on the internet. But then you need to actually create, uh, do your research with your target market. And so I, I went to universities, two universities in Lagos, and I interviewed about 2,000 students on the idea of a on your own? Yeah, me and two other people. I got two other people to actually yeah, two other people to come and pass out the surveys in, in the university and then get them to answer the questions. So when we were done with the question with the questionnaire, we found that sixty percent of them found that this was a problem we could solve. Amazing. And and that was what really gave me the confidence to go into the business. And this was even before we had the product. So we it was a pre product survey we did and then and that's why I always tell people you have to understand who your target market is. But even then, when you go into the market, some things change. You still have to adjust as a, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur. So, yeah, so it's um, even your price point, everything. So it, the research is your internet, but then you have to physically go and do the groundwork. So, Kati, too. you're telling me that all the knowledge you needed mm. to create that product, aside from understanding your target market, was from research online? So, no, not, not everything online. Mm -hmm. We had to get a food technologist on board. Right, and the lady we worked with, she had about 30 years of, 30 years of experience. Mm -hmm. Who she helped us do develop the, uh, the, the 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 product, and but also give us the guidelines and the um, sort of recipe to to uh, to so go into. So you the also got someone to advise you. Yeah, because you, you know I'm a man. I you know I'm not the best cook, right? So we need, we we also understand we need to get a product that tastes good, but then commercially you have to create a product that. You know, I you know. can cost and be able to. Amazing. Yeah. So I, I saw on your website that your your product has a secret. Con <laughs> so now, can you call, uh, can you come? <laughs> tell me my ears. Because I know you're not going to tell no, me. No, I can't tell but you But you know, that. this is why I always wonder about you guys mm. that have secrets with mm. what you make. Mm. You work with staff. You mm. have over 30 people on your team. Mm. How are you able to keep it a secret? So, you know, it's tough. But the thing is, you know, you have some um, ingredients that you can put together and you call it like a captain mix okay for example so and that's what you give them <laughs> so they don't know how captain yeah, mix was made yeah, yeah, exactly. correct <laughs> nice, nice yeah nice. you put it like a mix and then i think yeah i think we should do a chair to that <laughs> hmm. yeah <laughs> 
I see you really, prefer the your shake to my ice cream. This is really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The mac tastes good. <laughs> really good. But that's amazing. So Kachi, if you did not get a grant, because mm. when you wanted to start your business, mm. what would have been your alternative funding options? What, what would you have? Been good question. So you know, um, the grant we got was, you know, obviously, it, you know, it gives us some confidence and some, you know, obviously, some funding to go into the business. But really, um, obviously, I had. Um, I had some funds that I saved up from my oil and gas experience, and then obviously I had family who also put in some so supported the business. But really, I think that you don't have to have what I, you know, the experience that I had or in the family support. I, what I always tell people that it's not about money. If you have a product that you can create, I created this product in my in my kitchen. If you have a prototype of the product, and then you can create a plan, a business plan, you can always get funding. So you know you don't have to you know have be me per se in terms of my background, but you, if you have a product that is viable, people can money can always come. You mean in. you you could look for investors? Yeah, there, the lot of, yeah, the investors will always want to invest in something that they see can can give them returns on their investment, right? So if you have a product and it's it's viable, people want it, right? So you have to create demand and people because I did the research without having a lot of money. I went to. Unilag, if I can say Unilag. I went to Unilag, Yabatech, to do my research. I found that people wanted this product. So that's the way So as a result of that research that you probably showed to your family and friends to say, hey, this thing is going to work. We have over 60% of people saying they want this product. Exactly. You're saying I, that's enough an investor. Would you invest based on research? Just the research? You know, I, 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 would, I would invest in somebody who I believed in, who could work. So after you do all this, you still have to work hard. The person, the, the, pres- yeah, the person too matters as integrity well. Integrity or what do you look it's, for? Integrity, you know, hard work, integrity number one. You know, so I would always invest in somebody who has integrity, but also be able to come up with an idea and also be able to implement the idea. What do you do to de-stress, Kachi? So, of all that stuff, okay. let me you tell us. Okay. When we get back, Kachi's going to tell us how he relaxes and takes the factory stress mm-hmm, yeah. off himself. See you when we get back. Right. Welcome back, guys, and I'm excited. I'm still excited. I love meeting food entrepreneurs. I don't know why. It's, so, it's such a hallowed industry to me, maybe because I do only fashion. So when I see people doing, you know, anyway. Yeah. You, how do you de-stress? How do you relax? So I run. I'm part of a running group in Lagos uh, called the Road Warriors. Oh, yeah, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I run, um, and it helps me de-stress, because, and, and I get to think a lot when I run. So a lot of ideas, a lot of things, a lot of um, things I've been thinking about, problems I need to solve. Mm. I'm able to really I'll think. I'll try that. That only happens when I fly, but you're saying it will happen when I run. When, when, yeah, when you run, you get to really think and um, um, think about things that you need to do or things that you need to, you haven't done, okay. you know. So, yeah. Okay. It helps me Amazing. Add, you know. So obtaining raw materials, how is it, is it has it been easy? So that, that's one of the, it, it's one of the challenging parts, but also very, one of the exciting parts, and I'll explain why. Um, we work with farmers, right, that do tomatoes, onions, and peppers. And it's a big deal um, because the product, Captain Ready Stews, solves a, pro- a problem across the value chain. So in the value chain, you have production of the raw materials, which is the, the farmer. tomatoes farmers. Then you have logistics. Then you have processing, which is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And then you have distribution. And then you have retail. Yeah. So we're, we, we're proud that we actually... Um, work with farmers directly to offtake their tomatoes because if we didn't, if we weren't doing that, Nigeria suffers from fifty percent post-harvest losses at mm-hmm. the farm level, oh, I see. and what that means is that all of the harvest actually goes bad, bad. at the farm. Mm. So when you have a product like this, we are able to also put more money in the hands of these farmers yeah. and then make them also increase their yield. So are you no- saying, so, sorry to cut you off, mm. are you saying there's never been a time that you need tomatoes and you don't find you don't find there's always tomatoes well, onions and everything available it, i won't say always it's always we have to sometimes we have to really search during the, especially when in the off season 
we have to really go in and, and source. So are you saying we need more farmers? We need more farmers. We need more technology to come into the space that will allow us to grow all year round. A lot of people, I think there's some investments going into the, into the sector now. I'm working with a few uh, greenhouse farmers who are able to produce all year round. Mm -hmm. But I think that there has to be technology around you know, seeds that can prevent, um, obviously, uh, uh, losses and or, um, what do you call it, uh, tomato, uh, what's it? What's it? What's this um, disease? Diseases that affect. Okay, to, uh, I know yield. nothing about uh, the culture. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> there's some diseases that affect okay. you know, tomatoes. Okay, I know that kill. We kill yeah, it. So yeah. we, we need to come up with seeds that that that. Uh, yeah. That so you hear, battle. guys? They need more farmers. Agriculture. Let's let's you know get. But you guys are usually rich at the end of the day. The rich you, the food processors, like usually make more money than the farmers. Uh, uh, right or wrong? No, right? Well, you, you, it's not not quite. Well, let me not, you let, yeah, let me tell you. Yes, fifty five in the value. Value chain, 55% is in processing. Um, 55% of what? Of the, of the value okay. across the value chain. So you have, like I said, you have production, you have logistics, you have processing, you have distribution, you have retail. So in the aggregate, 55% in 50, is in processing. But that's just because, you know, um, I saw an opportunity with a product, right? But it doesn't mean that those who are producing a large scale can't make a lot of money. They can't make a lot of money. But well, you are making a lot of money. Don't yeah. make it sound like you're not making a lot of money. <laughs> everybody, can, everybody can make a lot of money in agriculture. Even the farmers, so I Yeah, agree. of course, of course. I agree. So I think it's really, it boils down to interest, what yeah. you are passionate about. If you want to farm, mm. if you want to process. Mm. How easy has distribution been for you? Because I know that. Tough. How easy was it to get? Because you're in over 300 stores in Nigeria. Mm. That is no small feat because I'm a mm. retailer as well. Oh, yeah. How did you achieve that? So it's tough. Um, I'll tell you, that's actually one of So outside of manufacturing, the, 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 the second hardest part, or uh, just as equally as hard is, is distribution. Mm -hmm. And it's because, you know, you have a new product and we were actually, a lot of people didn't believe it was a Nigerian product because of the way it looks. And it looks like a product that was developed in either the US or somewhere, you know, but, um, you know, that was one of the first things. But we had to keep pushing. You know, we had to spend money on marketing, create a lot of awareness, get people to try the product, give away free products. And then we had to get the food force to go into all these supermarkets. Distributors worked with us to push the product. So you have to just, you have to build it up. There's no way around it, really. And uh, people like you that are a retailer, we have to come and meet you. And then there's a lot of challenges even doing that because when you work with retailers, you know, they have these payment cycles that affect your business. So, yes. yeah, so we have to stay away. We're trying to stay away from that, actually work with distributors who will supply okay. the retailers. Okay. Okay. So it's, um, yeah, it's you're tough. You're tasking, but you're doing great, apparently. You're We're doing trying. great. Yeah, I love that you export. How easy has that been for you? It's tough. Uh, it's really tough. Really? Yeah. How? Why? What, what makes well, it Well, there's, there's, the, the, there's moving the product from Nigeria to, to Ghana. So the first truck, first truck that left went by road and had about 30 stops on the road. You know, from going from Nigeria to Ghana, you know how that goes. A lot of issues around that. Mm -hmm. um, then there's even moving, dealing with the, with the ports. There's issues with ports moving products in and out and of the country. And there's no, you don't have any company that just you can outsource that to. Well, you still need to be involved in it because it's your product, and you need to make sure that there's no issues with the uh, with the delivery. Because if you look so at you a truckload, it's it's a high value. Um, um, sort of uh, consignment going yeah. to another country. So you have to make sure that this thing gets from point A to point B. Oh, I see. So what, that's what, what I, when I see the movies and they say, oh, the, the consignment was... <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, you know, someone had a heart attack. So I, I guess that, that, that won't happen to you, of course, no, 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 hopefully. But, no, but okay, no. amazing stuff. Yeah. I, I, you know, I have so many more questions for you, but <laughs> I think we have to run. But mm -hmm. I see you're going to be making us a whole lot more, you know, packaged mm -hmm. foods. Mm -hmm. You keep saying no additives, no preservatives. Yeah. Is it going to continue that way? Of course, that is one of the big things. I'm, you know, I'm a runner, right? Okay. So, you're so big on health. I'm big on health, and mm. uh, and people need to understand. Oh, by the way, we're not the stew that was um, hijacked by customs. I don't know if you heard about the story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of people thought it was us. We make this product. Not them. We're not them. <laughs> we this product is hundred percent Nigerian, and people yeah, need to understand yeah. it. It looks. American foreign, or looks yeah. foreign, but we're a fully Nigerian so company. We can trust. Yeah, so you, people need to trust us. Uh, we don't put preservatives, additives, or any colors into the product. You know, we use technology to be able to pack the product in such a way that no air enters it. So, so I, lo I love your product already because yeah, I'm big on health. I love mm. to eat good food, mm. but it has to be healthy. Of Thank course. you so much for coming on this no show, Kachi. Mm. But we're still going to see Kachi very soon. Of course, you know why. Mm. When we return, we'll be meeting our corporate game changer. I cannot wait. She's, she's hot. <laughs> see you when I get back. Okay.